The subject that can pass or fail you in your final year of MBBS is medicine. And I know countless of horror stories from our seniors in one year particular year when a banned examiner actually came back on the day of the practical exams and just failed one third of the entire batch. It was literally a bloodbath in the ward that particular day. Do you remember that first anatomy viva we had in our MBBS? We were so anxious. Our heart was racing through the roof. So much of profuse sweating and symptoms of pre -sync copy we knew all the answers but we were fumbling in front of the examiner and under their pressure 10x the pressure we felt on the first day and that is your final year medicine viva for you but fear not because we all prepare very hard for these professional exams and i'm going to share with you four rules today that will make your exam a smooth sailing and you will come to know what exact questions they'll be asking you in the practical exams if you watch this video right up till the end the first rule is interrupting the patient now don't get me wrong this is not about being arrogant or not empathizing with the patient. Put yourself in the patient's shoes. When you're in a hospital environment, it is extremely depressing. You have a 50 bedded ward and each and every single patient is sick. Doctors are going around, interns are going around and there is very less attention paid to each and every single individual patient. In this environment, hope is the only word that patients are actually listening to. And when they communicate with you, they see a sense of hope. They see someone who is willing to hear their pains. As we all know, pain reduces when we actually share it with people and patients see doctors patients see students as a way of communicating their pain so our job as medical students is to actually empathize with them understand their pain share the pain but also get our work done and our work is taking a symptom that the patient feels and fitting it into a system and fitting it into a format because that is how we are taught in medical schools to fit symptoms into various systems and then analyze it forward a patient may not be interested in giving you details of each and every single system System. Because for a patient, breathlessness means something is long with the lungs. Whereas we all know that breathlessness can either be a respiratory system issue or a cardiovascular system issue or even a metabolic issue. For example, if breathlessness is associated with wheezing, we know it's a lung issue. If it is associated with the symptoms of orthopnea and PND, we know it's a serious issue. But the patient will not be telling you these symptoms upfront. You have to dig deep, deep into the patient's conscious. And this is where the rapport building comes. Interrupting the patient does not mean that you have a fixed frame of questions in your mind and you keep on bombarding the patient with those questions. It is not an interview. It is about developing a rapport, asking the patient a few personal questions and patients are usually willing to share their personal information because they find that a doctor is trustworthy. The second rule of medicine clinics is PR se examination karna. We all know that we don't like to be touched especially by a doctor and when it can cause a lot of pain especially in the abdomen area. This is why patients usually refuse to get examined by the doctor. But you can communicate with them why it is absolutely necessary for you to examine them. Now there are a few tricks that you can use from my own bag of tricks. For example, I usually tell the patients that if I examine them properly and if they are cooperative throughout the entire examination process, it will lead to a much definitive diagnosis. If there's something wrong I notice in the examination, I will immediately communicate it with my seniors and they will treat you in a much more better way leading to a better outcome. Aap dariyega nahi, bade doctor saab aayenge aur aapki ilaj karenge aur main jo bhi jo bhi aapka history deta hu aur aapko examine karta hu wo main bade doctor saab ko zaroor dikhaunga. This is usually what I tell patients and most of them understand and some of them who don't understand building the initial rapport with the patient is extremely important. But don't worry, even if the patient is not cooperative, you can always request your seniors to talk to the patient and make them understand why training doctors is absolutely necessary for healthcare in India to go forward. Whenever you examine the patient, always keep on talking to the patient because there are many things that actually can cause pain to the patient. For example, when we are examining the abdominal area, patient expects pain. Therefore, they will voluntarily try to contract the stomach muscles that are the rectus abdominis muscles and prevent you from actually going deep and palpating deep to find any organomegaly. So that's why talk to the patient, make the patient laugh, involve their relatives, show the relatives any clinical findings that you found and the clinical significance of those findings. This gets the entire patient, the relative, the doctor, the medical student, the intern and your patient is involved in the process of patient care and this is exactly what you'll be doing in the future you'll be collaborating with doctors from different fields of medicine a radiologist may talk to an ortho 
guy an ortho guy may talk to the trauma care patient and so on and so forth if you develop this habit initially in med school itself you're developing a new skill called diplomacy and that will be absolutely essential for you when you work in say a corporate hospital or a government hospital the third rule of medicine clinics is to listen to each and every single word the consultant tells bro i can't tell you how important this particular rule is because this rule can either make or break your final year mbbs preparation let me explain i feel that every single consultant in a government hospital in a private hospital has the potential to write his or her own textbook just that maybe they don't have the time or the interest to write one but that doesn't mean that you cannot read them like a book you can ask them questions you can ask them intelligent questions you can ask them such intelligent questions only when you're interested and only when you have done your homework at home the trick over here is to list down each and every single question that they have asked and each and every single answer that they have given to you corresponding to the particular question they have literally combined all of their 20 30 years of medical experience into that one answer and that is absolutely golden we all know that what is written in our medicine textbooks that can be outdated that can be good from a theoretical standpoint but what we learn from going to the wards what we learn from questioning our consultant that is wisdom and wisdom cannot come from one particular textbook but these consultants have seen patients they have read multiple textbooks throughout the entire career and they are bringing all of that experience to you in that half an hour or, or one hour they spend with you daily in the wards some of my students used to do one particular thing and i absolutely loved it i could not actually do it what they would do is that they would patiently listen to each and every single word that the consultant is telling in the clinics and then they would go home and they would write everything down so they are not only practicing active listening in the clinics they are also actively recalling what the consultant told them in the wards so that they can go back home and make their own notes so they are revising it twice once in the wards and once back at home when they are trying to remember what the consultant told them and i think this is a extremely extremely important trick which is scientifically backed called as active recall and the true test of whether you are completely exhausted a consultant by asking them questions is when they say something like listen anirudh this is not the level of knowledge that we expect from mbbs student this is something for pg students that is when you know that you have completely exhausted the topic for them and uh, the only additional information that they will tell you is what is required for a pg student if you reach to this particular point in a particular case you can be confident that you know everything that the consultant knows up to the mbbs level the fourth rule of medicine clinics is a discussion with your batchmates and doing your homework now this rule is such a no brainer but i see people not actually using this effectively and that is because we feel that if we share the knowledge that we studied someone else may get a competitive edge and may stand more better in the marks they may get more marks in the university level and people will appreciate them more but what we don't understand about our medical profession is that it's a social service only by collaborating with other future doctors is how we will lift the entire healthcare system up we always want a better work culture and that means coming together collaborating with our doctors but it is not possible for a single teacher or a single student to grasp every bit of knowledge that is taught to us in med school this is where you can use your friends and batchmates in a positive way it might be the case that that you studied a particular paragraph and you did not completely understand what it exactly meant whereas some other student with some other capabilities in their mental faculty understood that paragraph much much more better than you and through your discussion you can both clarify their doubts and clear your doubts as well I remember in a final year of MBBS we made a WhatsApp group and in that WhatsApp group every single student had to send all the questions that were asked to them in the prelim examination and trust me almost all of the questions that were asked to us by the examiners for our final year MBBS practical exams came from that particular WhatsApp group and over here everybody was selfless everybody shared the knowledge because everybody knew that we are in med school together and it's only by collaboration that we will pass and we hit a huge record that is 90% of our classmates actually passed the entire final year mbbs and that really brought the entire class together that we could do final year of mbbs in just 5 months the next thing is to actually come home and revise what you did in the board so i recommend three sources mainly for this First thing is this wonderful book called Kundu. Now Kundu is absolutely brilliant. It has its various cases like short cases of cyanosis, pallor, hemiplegia and jaundice. And the questions that are from Kundu are the exact questions that you will be asked during your vivas. So Kundu is a no brainer. Please please buy this book. The second book is Alagappan. Alagappan you should be using for your symptomatology and for your examination. 
It is excellent in giving you differential diagnosis of every single symptom. It will teach you concept and it also has some viva questions. And Alagappan has beautiful way in which it explains by diagrams so that you pick up the information much much more efficiently. The third is case formats. Go to your seniors and get case formats because a particular format has to be followed and this is very specific to each and every single state, each and every single hospital, each and every single consultant. Talk to your seniors and make a list of which consultant wants a particular answer in what format. And trust me, even if you know very little, but you put the information across in an efficient manner, in a manner which needs to be heard by the consultant, you will get more marks. Hope this video makes you a better clinician apart from helping you pass final year of MBBS. And if you want to know all the books I need to read in the final year of MBBS, do hit the video right above over here. It'll give you the absolute detail of what you need to know to read theory in your final year of MBBS. And I will be bringing you more entertaining vlogs, more educational vlogs, and showing you the fun, the learning, and the co-bonding with the co-interns over here during my MBBS internship. So do hit the subscribe button for the same. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.